Hello, I am Sentimus Prime, and here I will be reviewing the Creo Transformers Battle Changer Decepticon Shockwave. Now, first and foremost, we will be taking a look at a closer look at the kit itself, and we, of course, we will be taking a nice, good look at the head. And I will say it does look really nice. It's a nice, it's a nice, simple, like, chibi-fied, chibi-fied, uh, shockwave head. Very nice. The antennae, the antennae, the antennae are, the antennas are very, are nice and blunt and, and simple. Very, it's, it's a nice, simple shockwave head design. And removing that, we do get a, we do get that Creon, uh, squared off chin head sculpt with a very interesting face print. It does look very interesting. It even has like a little speaker thing, speaker mouth there. Looks, looks really nice, even on, even without the helmet. Of course, it can, it lines up pretty well with the, with the eye. No, very nice. Something else that is also pretty nice is how the torso is printed. It does very neat. You can definitely tell that that is a very, that, that that is Shockwave's iconic jet chest details, as well as some like ab details, and even a teeny tiny Decepticon symbol right there on the middle of his chest, as per usual. Very interesting. Now let's move on to like the rest of the body and how it's built. Now we'll say it, his robot mode, his robot mode looks really nice. On top of the very nice vibrant purple and gray, he also has little hints of this lavender color as a sort of accent color to his color scheme, which is very nice. Very cool. Something that I do very much appreciate is how well built his arms are. And that you can see that he has like these massive like shoulder pauldrons that are like built like really solidly. Very nice. And moving down to his arms, he does have an asymmetrical build when it comes down to his for when it comes down to his forearms. Where you can see on this arm, you get a build that is very similar to that of the uh, Battle Changer Grimlock. Whereas on this side, you do have a shorter, stumpier arm that is also attached to a gun accessory, which is his, uh, iconic gun arm, ex which is, yeah, it's his iconic gun arm. Very, very nice. How that's, very nice how good that looks on his arm. Now, moving down to his legs, he, he does have extremely short and simple thighs but moving down to his lower legs these are really nice and chunky these are really nice chunky builds his legs are, have this nice chunk to them with nice blocky chunk to them which is very nice his feet are a little simple but are very effective and hey at least this time they actually look like feet. Now we're gonna turn this 
little guy around, and I am honestly surprised how I'm honestly surprised of how, and I'm honestly surprised with how well his back cleans up, especially compared to the other two uh, battle changers I've taken a look at. You see, that's very nice. He, he, something I do appreciate about this little guy is how, like, distributed his, uh, his, uh, vehicle mode parts are. Because instead of having this, like, massive backpack thing over his back, he had, he has a chunk that is a, pretty evenly distributed across. The figure, you get a couple big chunks on his shoulders, a couple big chunks on his legs. And then the rest of it just neatly folds up into his back, like so. Very nice. And you even get, like, these little, like, fin things that look nice from the front. Very nice. Very nice indeed. And you also... He also has like this little like butt flap thing, which I prefer to just hinge that up. Not only to not only to have clearance for articulation, but also to lock this what will be deterrent in place. And yeah, it's very nice how neatly folded up fold how neatly this back kibble thing folds up. Really appreciate that. Something else I really appreciate about this one in particular is how his, is how his silhouette silhouette looks. Yes it does because well yes it still looks a little bit wonky to due to the fact that he's still using that this guy also uses that uh crayon torso which is very very tiny compared to the rest of his body but the fact that he has a still has a very nice menacing uh still has a really nice cool silhouette to him is honestly impressive very nice do appreciate that very cool. Do I do say that does look very nice. Uh, now let's uh, now let's move on to our articulation, shall we? Like these other two, the head is on a swivel. The head is on a swivel, and the head and the arm just popped off. That's my fault. The joints do hold up. The well, the ball and socket joints do hold up decently well. That was just my fault. But yeah, his head can swivel, as can as can this as can the turn thing. Once you move this down, it does have a butt flap that can move out of the way. Now, as far as arms go, he. Easily has the worst like shoulder articulation out of the three because due to how chunky his like his shoulders are, can't eat. He, he can still do the he can still do the forward and back motion. He can still rotate it back and forth. He 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 just can't rotate it like up because because how much stuff gets in the way. So, as far as his shoulders go, they are slightly less articulated, but that's fine. Uh, ball, uh, shoulder, elbows, they're on ball joints. And they can bend up, they can both bend up to 90 degrees, and you, and in order, they also, and they can also act as bicep rotations. Though, you, you, they, they would need to, go down a little bit in order to uh, bend them side to side. But that's no big deal. 
And of course, this is on a, and of course this gun is on a clip which can hinge up and down for extra uh, gun articulation. Uh, the waist is on a swivel, th though just like the Grimlock, the back kibble does get in the way. So, so it, you're gonna have to like, move it down a little bit and then use it and stuff like that. The hips are just like the other two. They're on these expressive ball joints. They can kick up that far and they can kick back to about that far and of course they can kick up to the, out to the side and they can like ro rotate and all that their ball joints and ball joints are for the knees which can bend not your 90 degrees you you can swivel them around and and do all the, and tilt them and you can also like tilt them to have you can also tilt the Legs like this to to sort of insinuate a sort of ankle uh a tilt of some sort. Speaking of, the ankles are also on hinges, which means they can hinge back and forth for back and forward movements. So so yeah. His articulation is pretty good. Not necessarily the best, but he does do a pretty good job of posing. Though it, it though it can get a little bit tricky with how small his thighs are, but 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 that's mainly due to transformation. It, due to transformation, these thighs kind of need to be this short. And so, as for accessories, his only accessory is like this, which ju is just, which is just on his arm. So we have that. And as for size comparisons, here he is next to your standard Creon figurine. And here he is next to your standard minifigure. Like, you know, from head to toe, the minifigures can, are reaching up, are like, stand up to like his knees. Like that. Here he is next to cross cut. So they have that. And here he is next to the Grimlock and Ironhide. And Ironhide I am going to be keeping in this vehicle mode. So I'm going to bring that back later. But I'm going to bring that back now just to give you like a good shot of them. A good look at all three of them together. That's how that looks. I'll bring them back later. But you can see that he is like nearly a head taller than Grimlock despite his legs being super long despite his legs despite having like the longer thighs and stuff he's still almost a head taller and that's because of Shockwave's like really tall uh shins interesting but with that out of the way Let's get into transformation. So, first we remove the gun. Unfortunately, yes, this does feature at least a little bit, the littlest bit of parts forming. Which is kind of unfortunate, but oh well. So, what you do is you hinge the feet up so that the anti-studs here uh, plug into the studs right here, like so. Boom, boom. 
Next, what you do is you rotate the arms upward, and we'll get and we'll get to the forearms later. For now, let's rotate the waist around, rotate the legs, and and get that split working. Then what you do is you clip these clips into these hinge pieces, like so. You do the same with the other side, making sure everything's lined up nicely. You hinge the butt flap down. You, hin you hinge these panels out and you rotate it 180. And then what you do is you rotate the uh, forearms. So it is a little bit tricky because it's asymmetrical. So what you're going to do is you're going to rotate this arm and rotate it like that. And then the other one, you'll rotate it like so. And then after that, you just take the gun and you clip it onto the turret like so. It is going to be misaligned. So just keep that in mind. And with that, there you have Shockwave. You, first you line everything up, but there, but after that's done, you, there you have Shockwave in his, uh, tank mode. And I will say, the tank mode, while not looking aesthetic, well, not looking too aesthetically pleasing. I will say, it's it doesn't look too bad. It doesn't look too bad. It's I guess you can say like it looks. It, I guess you can pass this off as like a Cybertronian tank mode of some sorts. So taking a nice look at it, you do get these sticker detailings. Uh, at full display, which do look nice. Do, do get a lot more of these stickers, uh, out as these nice details. No, yeah, very nice. Once again, not t looking too bad. And take a look at the underneath. That's how he looks from underneath, and yeah, his head is kind of exposed, facing uh from the back. But considering that this, I guess that this would be a more Cybertronian tank mode. I guess it's not really that big of a deal. He does have a pair of wheels up here. As well as, instead of a second pair of wheels, he uses, like, these vent pieces as, like, landing gear, as, like, like, as, like, a stand sort of thing. Which means he does roll, which means he does roll decently, but only on, like, harder surfaces. If you try rolling this guy on, like, a carpet or something... You're, I'm willing to bet that you can you can bet that these vent pieces are going to get caught on the rug, but on like a flatter su surface, it rolls nicely. Doesn't really get caught on anything. Something else I do appreciate about this particular about this guy about this guy's uh tank mode is how is how uh most of this stuff like tabs in place which is very nice the feet lock in place the arm the legs and the arms lock together to form a very nice and solid tank mode 
Very nice. Something I take a little bit of an issue of is the is the fact that his turn well you can rotate three sixty which is nice. It's very it's a very like free spin sort of rotation. And that is like not not really the type of rotation I want on my that I personally want on my tank turrets, but it's not too bad, especially when you like hinge these down in a way that it, it won't like spin out of control or anything like that. Now, yeah, on top of this on a swivel, the panels on the side can hinge up and down, and of course the turn the barrel of the gun can hinge up and downward. As well as the arms just out there doing their own thing. Does give it a kind of asymmetrical look to it, which is fine. It doesn't ha not everything has to be symmetrical, right? But if you, but if you are kind of annoyed with how off center the barrel is, you can just clip this off and like plug this into the hole up here. And you can have it more even like that. Or you can like, and there's a couple things you could do with, with it. I prefer to just have it clipped here for the extra movement, turret movement. But yeah, that's not a whole lot going on with the tank mode. And that's fine. Moving on to articulation. Here he is next to the, Cre the Creon and Lego minifigure. They could say that, so yeah, I say that the minifigure is about as tall as Shockwave in this vehicle mode. Up next, we have Skids, the Dox class Skids. Very tiny, very tiny compared to Skids. And here he is next to the other. Battle changers, that being Grimlock and Ironhide. I'm not going to bother transforming Grimlock right now because it's not really about this video, ain't really about him. I already made one of him. So, moving these guys out of the way, and it's now time for my overall thoughts. My overall thoughts, I will say, robot mode wise, he is my favorite out of the three. As far as vehicle modes, as far as the, like, alternate modes, I'd say, I'd say he's on par with the, I'd say he's on par with Ironhide's vehicle mode, where it doesn't really look that complete or or like it doesn't really look that complete it still holds together very well and it's and it's still fun to put mess around with however the robot mode is easily no well, maybe not easily grimlock's robot mode is still pretty good too i say out of the three Shockwave has the best robot mode, in my opinion. The alternate mode is on par with Ironhide's. And that combined with him having the best looking robot mode, in my opinion, kind of makes the Shockwave, uh, honestly, my favorite out of the three. With... With Grimlock at a very close second. 
and then I've ar and then I've said my piece with the iron hide. So overall, do I recommend uh, this shockwave? Um, I'd say if you want a a if you want to try if you want. I'd say if you want a crayon like figure to try out to see to see what these things are about, I'd say I'd recommend getting this one. And like I said with the Grim with the Grimlock I believe. I I'd say I'd say ten to fifteen dollars is a good is a decent enough price for this thing, but I would not but I don't think I would pay over twenty dollars for any of these Creon like battle changers. But overall, the shockwave is hold the shockwave. It doesn't really have the prettiest looking alt mode, but I do and I do enjoy it. This guy overall. Let's just center him up. And that'll be it. If you enjoyed this review, consider to like and subscribe and maybe even comment if you want. And of course, I will be posting again sooner or later.